Morning guys, it's another beautiful day out here. So, oh, yesterday, it's bloody fiberglass. I got it all on my stomach and arms and, <coughs> excuse my French, is itchy. So, I'm gonna coat it. I don't care if it's early, too early or not, I'm gonna coat it. So I've mixed up some primer. Um, that's what I've used, so we've got acrylic filler, hardener, a little bit thinner, just a thin bit of a roller. And I'm just going to basically use a little four inch roller <coughs> and roll the primer on it, should give it a nice thick coat ready for sanding. And just get all this covered up. I've gone over it now with panel wipe. <coughs> and it's just a it's just preventive measure to stop me getting so freaking itchy with it all, so I can seal it. There we go. So I won't bore you with the process of putting it on. I'll uh, come back when it's done. But that's where we're up to at the minute. Okay, right, straps off, all painted. Um, a lot less holes in this bit <laughs> compared to that bit. So, like I say, the, <clears throat> the stuff where I put the glass bubbles is the correct term, I believe, in the uh, in the resin. So that's that done. Then I've got uh, mixed up some resin and got the roller out and I've rolled all the wood. So that's now sealed with polyester resin. Um, yes, I did use the same roller <laughs> that I used on the paint. It's a bit grey, but it's all out. So, <coughs> you can see from the shine now, it's all coated. So that's all waterproof now. And uh, at least now if it rains, I don't have to worry about it getting wet. And this one is done as well, so I've run out of hardener now, so I've used up all the resin I was able to make, so I've coated the outside at least, so that side, the top edge, edge, down this edge, and this side, and the two top bits. So, um, yeah, not a lot more I can do today really, other than more sanding, but I can't bring myself to get in there and start sanding yet, I've had enough of sanding lately. So, it's welding today, so what I've got to do is, it's annoying that the trailer's now on, but I thought that bunk would be enough at the back here to support the boat, but without the strap, if I was to put weight on here, it would quite literally, you know, it's barely on there. So the game plan should have been to have sort of done a bunk from that back post there and then run the one all the way up onto the axle. So I'm going to try and get away with just putting a bit of metal on there, I've got some box section up and putting just a small uh, runner, bank, bunk, bunk, that's the word, fucking hell. I'm mad. So yeah, if I can come up from there, a bit of strip of metal across the top, make a small like bunk about 10 inches wide. I'm hoping that it'll do the trick to support the trailer. Because that kill roll will be great. I just shove the metal wood under there just to stop it flexing because when I was in it, it bouncing up and down like a good And that roll is shagged as you can see. Left a big black mark. So really get paid at the end of the month when I've got some cash I'm gonna get uh, possibly get all new kill rollers maybe the polyester ones or something because they don't leave the marks um, and then obviously another reason why it's bouncing is it's got nothing in the front of it yet still so uh, originally it was welded there and there let's try that again it was welded there and there and came up but it came up too violently so I need to sort of weld something from there to come to about here to support that have one of those rubber blocks oops, sorry have one of those rubber blocks on there and then that should stop the bounce in the trailer as well and then I'll come off of this bit up for the winch and that should suffice for that but yeah I think I'm gonna enjoy the sun today I don't really know what else to do other than I need to borrow my good neighbour's uh, jigsaw again and then I'll I was thinking about advertising and asking if anyone had a hatch so I'll mention it now anyway 
a hatch, uh, what we're talking 13, 14 inches um, width and up to 35. So anywhere from about 25 to 35, 13 or 14 inch, so no more than 14 to go that way and up to 35 inches that way. So I need a hatch for there and then that step will be storage as well as this one, which I haven't cleaned the inside out, it's disgusting, hide that, yeah. So yeah, I tried jet, well I think I jet washed it, I can't remember, but, yeah, and he's going to need painting inside, but I'll do that by brush, it's going to be later, uh, probably one of the last stages, but it's a case of getting in the sand and all that crap around the sides now, so it's not too bad, I'm not going to touch the floor, I'm not going to bother touching the floor, it's just time consuming, and you won't see it when the carpet's in. <laughs> Um, that bit obviously will get painted, this is all going to get painted, that will get painted, it'll all get painted, <laughs> but until I get some fiberglass resin filler mixed up and start going around and putting a layer all over this and filling it like divots like that one, so, you see that, so that, filling and shaping, but like I say, I couldn't handle this fiberglass anymore, it's fucking pissing me off, I've got in I had to get the bath on my arm up there and on the other arm and all my eyelids and everything. It's got bloody fiberglass resin. No, uh, fiberglass resin, fiberglass dust. Fucking irritable. Bloody irritable. So that'll be the last time I work with fiberglass. I mean, I'll certainly sand in it. <clears throat> bloody flies everywhere today. Um, then this hole, I thought, well, actually, what I could do is use a bit of wood that was originally cut out of there, shape it, fill it in, and yeah, fill that hole in with the wood and then just put the uh, pour the epoxy stuff over the top of it. Alright, that'll have to do for now. That's all I've got going on at the minute. Um, I don't know what else to do. Oh, I put that engine on the other day. Fucking scratched it. But I'm not bothered, you won't see that when the engine's on. I might do is fucking stick a bit of that carpet stuff. I've got to the actual transmit. No, not stick it, but you know, let the motor hold it in place. So I think that's all there is to show for the moment. If there's any updates by the end of the day, I'll add them on. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hit the like button. Thank you very much. Winding up video. We're done uh, for a day anyway. Uh, let's remind you. Oh, I'm trying to remember where I was up to last time. Right, I'll show you that side. That's disgusting. See, I've made a bit of progress on the back here, a little bit of sanding on the grey. And all that's been sanded down. Just giving it a quick rinse and washed it all down. Uh, and then obviously that side. Now to be fair, it amazes me. Because as far as I've sanded back, I mean I haven't got it all off because I don't need to, but there's nothing wrong with a gel coat. So why paint the bloody thing? Why not just polish it? I don't get people. Why Why put some shitty paint on it? I mean, granted, it's a, it, it's an off-white. It's, it's a creamy white, the original gel coat. And I can only assume someone wanted it white. But they've done such a shit job. I mean, you can see down the bottom. you are fucking run. God, Jesus. Limpid Christie would be impressed. Uh, anyway, right, that hole that was a bung, it's... It was a modified handlebar bung, you know the bit that goes on the end of your handlebars and your push bike, which had a hole in it, so which is no fucking good at all. So I dug it all out. It's dry and it's not wet. It's um, residues of a bit of mould, but nothing. It's, it's dry. So I mixed up some A and B um, expanding foam, made myself a little funnel with some tape and poured it in and quickly taped it off to fill the hole up ripped off the excess, um, I'll get some filler and I'll fill that hole, fill the seat holes as well, there's a couple of holes in the floor there, they'll get done, and then onto my woodwork, I've even watered this off, washed it off with water, very good, it's coming out lovely waterproof with the um, polyester resin on it, and then I cut that bit of wood out, and it was sticking up so I got my saw, and hoofed away at it. And then you can see in there the expanding foam. I poured some foam in there to help seal, hold that area tight. So that's plenty that would have escaped off round about, yeah, somewhere out there. It's quite a bit went in there, but it came up so quick. Where is it? Um, 
nice over there now. But yeah, it came up so quick that it expanded in the cup before I got a chance to pour it all out. <laughs> It'd been a warm day and this judged how quick it would go. Stirred it for 10 seconds, started to pour and it was done. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> with the um, primer on in it, it does show all the holes. You can see it, it's horrendous. This is all I need digging out because I won't be able to get filler underneath it. And I've lost my nail. Yeah, I like my picky nail, it helps pick shit, but yeah. Anyway, um, screws you won't see. We'll have the matting over that. And that's about the best I can do a day, really. I'm not saying that old nail. And we can see that it's up there. Nice new foam in there. And then there's a hole, so there's obviously another one of them brackets down there. Presumably to hold the old console. <coughs> Mine's going to go up against this now that I've got rid of that. I, mean, I don't need to fill that, it's going to get covered, but I will. And I've got a couple of screws to take out here. A couple of holes to fill in there, same over the other side. Uh, there's a screw over there, I'm not sure whether that's the drain out between the bolt heads, but it's a bit high up so it seems a bit pointless, so I might lose that screw, fill that hole in. Uh, these brackets, because I don't know what to do with them, I'm not going to touch them at the minute, I'm just going to leave them where they are, and then when I finalise where I want to put everything, I'll unscrew them, fill any holes that need filling, and screw them back into place. They'll probably have to come up first because I'm going to have to put the carpet down first drill through the carpet and then screw them down. The carpet won't be coming back up. So if it needs cleaning, it'll need jet washing out and then hoovering or whatever. But it's uh, it's going in permanently on the floor. And then the same up there. That'll obviously get painted white, this front bit. <clears throat> but yeah, I think that's the end of today's update. More filling, more sanding. But that side at least, I mean, I can all down there that, that that can be primed now i'm happy how that's come out once i've flattened it primed it and then sanded it again it'll be ready for the paint job um so i sand all this and then, Jesus, the orange bit why, why why paint and leave runs everywhere why do such a shit job if you're trying to make something look nice make it look fucking nice and just slap paint on it and the next poor bastard who is me end up giving me tons more bloody work because I can't paint over that, it looks shit. So that's got to be sanded back. And it's, I don't know what, my sanders, I've knackered them both out. Neither of them have got much in the way of Velcro traction left. Uh, one of them is a dual action, but is now a single action because it won't spin. So it becomes a vibrator. So that won't get bugger all off. And then the other one, if I put a new disc on it, it'll, uh, it will sand for about 30 seconds and fly off. <laughs> So that's been a nightmare trying to sand all that with the disc keep flying off. But we got there, that's why I've given up now. And I'm going to have to go and buy myself a new sander. Or at least a Velcro bit on the bottom. Alright, thanks for watching again guys. That's the end of that one for today. A little bit of progress. Is there anything to mention before I go? No, I think that's it. See you in the next one.